uh, this happened to me. I met the lady. I met the brothers. They were all said that it was time for me. But before they wrote their statements, uh, they passed away one, two, three, right now. And so uh, I personally that this has happened. And I appreciate what you guys do. I mean, being in the legislature, uh, Understand, y'all. Hopefully, you understand now. This is my last year, and uh, and I'm being honest. I'm ready to go home. I've done my I've done my true duty. I was in the army. I spent. I was at 9/11, and I did a whole bunch of other things. And some say that you're a hero. I tell them that I'm just a country boy from Louisiana. Carlton Taylor was a was a serviceman. He had never done anything before this happened. He was a upstanding citizen, had a great job. And all of that came to an abrupt uh, ending one night drinking and drugs. And it's not a new, it's not a new story, but it's a sad story. I think he understands where he is. He may have a, I, I listened to him talk. He's not as sharp as he used to be. But some people tell me, maybe I'm not sure. It's how you put some time in, you know, with all. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to belabor it any longer. I apologize to those who might think that I'm asking for something that he that he doesn't deserve a time certain. I want to thank y'all for the time and opportunity. Uh, uh, I spent a lot of time at at at, at Leavenworth. Not Leavenworth, excuse me. I did some time. I didn't do any time at Leavenworth. <laughs> See, so get a little mixed up. But anyway, uh, down in Angola, and I met with the veterans. And I put together a veterans program. Most of those guys came back bent and broke, and and so they may never get out. But I worked my best to help them. And I'm also the chairman of, of uh, veterans, military and veterans affairs. So we work a lot to help veterans. So I hope that if he gets out, that we'll be able to also help him with our veterans programs. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Mr. Allen Cox. To you, the honorable members of the museum, Lord Park. I am Dr. Valerie Cox. I'm the oldest daughter of Parson Taylor, DOC number 113542. I am 49 years old. I was 11 when my dad became incarcerated. I am a licensed ordained minister, a certified counselor and a school board member currently serving as president of my board. I have made the four hour drive to visit my dad multiple times during his imprisonment. I have kept money on his books on a monthly basis, and I've talked to him on a weekly basis over the phone via emails. <laughs> I remember my dad as being a loving, caring, protective, and hardworking father when I was a child. He and my mother had me when they were both very young, following their senior year of high school. However, my dad did not hesitate to accept responsibility for me and my mother, and he married my mother and established um, and enlisted in the United States Army after he graduated so he could provide for us. My dad has expressed his remorse and feelings of guilt so many times, um, you know, almost every time that I speak to him, he expresses his remorse, his guilt for the impact uh, that his crime had on my mother, my siblings, and me. And still today, you know, he, he always tells me that he is so sorry for the crime he committed 
and, and the way that it affected us growing up. And we always assured him as Christians with unconditional love for him in our hearts that we have forgiven him completely. And there's no need to continuously apologize over and over and over for a crime that he committed almost 40 years ago. I believe that my dad, Carlton, is definitely a rehabilitated man. He has taken the initiative to complete sex offender rehabilitation, anger management, and countless spiritual and educational courses offered through the correctional system over all the years. He is wise beyond his years now, and he imparts great advice into my two sermons. His grandson is about life lessons that he has learned the hard way. He has suffered several major life threatening medical conditions during his incarceration, including open heart surgery, two brain surgeries on two separate occasions to remove tumors from his brain. He's had um, seizures. He didn't mention that, but he had seizures also leading up to uh, the removal of those tumors. He's had chemotherapy for prostate cancer, which is currently in remission. He is blessed to still be alive, and I'm so thankful for the life-saving medical care that he has received as an inmate. Mrs. Cox, we're going to need you to wrap it up. Sure. <clears throat> I, I will conclude by saying my dad is a born-again Christian, and he relies heavily on his faith in God to cope with his health issues and prison life. I feel he's completely reformed. He will not be a threat to anyone in any way. He's 68 years old now. He was almost 30 when he was convicted. I have been there for him throughout his incarceration of 38 years. And if granted a pardon, I will continue to be there to help him. My husband and I are willing to provide him with a job, home, food, clothing, money, and whatever is necessary for him to have a successful transition into the free world. He also has a wonderful family support system back home that are all equally willing to help and assist him as well. My dad missed all of my graduations as well as my siblings. He missed our birthdays. We need to wrap you up. And he missed the birth of all of his grandchildren and so many numerous um, occasions that we physically needed him to be there. I only ask you, each member of the Louisiana Board of Parks, to see the Change rehabilitated man that I see today, and from your hearts, you know, give grant him a pardon so he can enjoy the rest Thank of his you. life with his family. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. Now we hear from the opposition, Ms. Scheider. Thank you, sir. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be heard by the board. I have had the opportunity to review uh, the application that um, Mr. Taylor has prepared and to listen today to those who spoke in favor of his release. I would like to speak in opposition uh, with respect to Mr. Taylor's attorney, I would point out that when Mr. Freeman was asking about the other offense for which he was charged similarly, uh, the response was that he had been found innocent of those charges. And with respect, there is a, a great deal of difference between having charges dismissed uh, and being found innocent. And what happened in that particular case was that the charges were dismissed, I believe in large part in reliance upon the defendant, Mr. Taylor being sentenced to a life sentence here uh, in the 42nd. I was struck, first of all, by Mr. Taylor's application when he indicated to the board that he has served enough time uh, for his crimes. And I would 
respectfully disagree with that. I would disagree with Mr. Taylor who put that in his application. I would disagree with Mr. Cox who indicated that as well as Mrs. Cox who indicated that during their speeches. I think that the appropriate time for Mr. Carlton Taylor to serve for his crimes has previously been decided. It's been decided by multiple people, uh, not, not myself. It's been decided by the legislature who determined first of all that life without the benefit of probation, parole, or suspension of sentence was the appropriate sentence for his crime. It was determined that that was the appropriate sentence for him by the jury who convicted him of charges who carried that length of incarceration without benefit as a penalty. And it was determined also by the judge who sentenced him to a term of life in prison without the benefit of probation, parole, or suspension of sentence. It is not for Mr. Taylor, his family, or with respect, anyone else to determine that those people were wrong. They have determined that life and sentence, life without benefit was the appropriate sentence for him for what he did. He went into a person's home without permission with the intent to commit a crime. And once inside, he was armed with a weapon, used that weapon to intimidate and force a woman against her will, Ms. Watson, to uh, submit to intercourse with him against her will, um, and then threatened her that he would kill her if she told anyone. Um, and as Mr. Freeman ably pointed out, he was also charged with a very similar offense in a neighboring jurisdiction right around the same time, all of which arose out of the position of trust that Mr. Taylor had been put in as a result of his employment as a meter reader. Um, respectfully, members of the Board of Pardon and Parole, the defendant, Mr. Taylor, in this case has basically shown you during the questioning the same story that he served up to the victims and the victims' families and to the judicial system. When questioned about his responsibility and his accountability for his crimes, he continued to say, it wasn't my fault. When questioned about his problems while incarcerated, his write-ups for various reasons, Mr. Taylor's responses were the same. It's not my fault. It didn't happen that way. That person was wrong. They were lying. I think that that shows that Mr. Taylor has not learned what he espoused to have learned from the various programs that he has attempted or completed while incarcerated. He has not learned that to accept responsibility or accountability for his own actions. And that is true even after 30 something years of being incarcerated. It is for those reasons and for the fact that the victim and the victim's family have relied upon the fact that they believed that Mr. Taylor would serve his natural life in prison without benefit, that we would ask that you deny his application and allow him to continue to serve that sentence that everybody in the judicial system has relied upon all of these years. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Mr. Uh, Taylor, is there anything you'd like to say before we turn it over to uh, Ms. Jackson? Ethan, is there anything you'd like to say before you turn over to speak? Ethan, asking you what you would like. No, I have no further comments. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Ms. Jackson, you want to wrap it up for us? Yes, I'm not sure in what capacity Ms. Snyder is speaking in. Is she a victim's family member or is she speaking on behalf of the district? She's an assistant DA, I believe. 
I'm the assistant. So this is not a family. Okay, I apologize when I first heard it with cutting in and out. I thought you were a family member. I don't believe, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm looking at the record that a family member has submitted an opposition to this um, hearing today and on, uh, as far as being part. I think you've heard testimony from Representative Cox, Mr. Cox, that he had actually spoken with the family and the victim before she passed, and they believed uh, that Mr. Taylor had served his time. Uh, at some point during the service of his time, he wrote a letter to the victim apologizing. That was in the first year for his actions. Mr. Taylor, I, I mean, I heard something completely different today. Mr. Taylor didn't say that it was not his responsibility. He took full responsibility for what occurred in this incident. He also talked about being remorseful. Um, at any time, I think he was he was questioned about one write up, although another was mentioned. He gave his understanding of what happened during that write-up. But irrespective of that write-up after 38 years in a facility, to just say that Mr. Taylor's judge and jury's time given to him is, it will be substantiated. It means we would need no Louisiana Board of Pardons because that line of thought would mean that at no time an offender in the state of Louisiana because someone decided your time at the trial it wouldn't be necessary for us to have a board of pardons. It wouldn't, why would it be? If our legal argument every time someone came before this board of pardons is that the jury and the judge gave that person the time and they decided 38 years ago what time that person should serve, then why would there be a statute created? Mr. Jackson, I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean that but the pardon board is, is clearly aware of what the law is and, and why we are here. Uh, we we uh, we understand that uh, the, the fact that a jury, okay, uh, and I was just the judge rendered a verdict. That's that that's beyond us. Our job today is to determine who Mr. Taylor is today and what he's accomplished. So that's what I'd like you to uh, uh, to get to. If you would. I, I, I was, I'm addressing that. I was only responding to the argument of the opposition. Thank I you. apologize. I know meant to intend. While incarcerated, prior to his medical condition, uh, Mr. Taylor went through a number of rehabilitative measures, not just the um, sex offender certificates in the four phases he completed. He also completed a carpentry degree, some more degrees from the Baton Rouge Community College. He went through extensive drug rehabilitation. During his time of incarceration, he also was, before he came here, uh, to this facility under the medical conditions, uh, as he mentioned, he has um, received some biblical certificates and still attends those uh, classes while here. Mr. Taylor has done everything that we would consider, um, including the Professional Academy of Sex Offender Treatment Program, and he has entered it again. And someone asked, why would you enter that again? For an inmate who is in, a, uh, in such medical condition of his, there are limited resources for him to better himself. So entering that program again is a way to keep him where he needs to be. And, and that's why he re-entered. He is on no duty here, so he cannot hold a job because, it's because of his medical condition. Um, if you, uh, and I'm sure you have looked at all of the programs Mr. Taylor has completed prior to his medical condition and some even after his medical condition, including anger management, um, the class on learner taking personal responsibility, um, another angle management class, uh, his participation in Church of Christ seminar, and I won't keep going through those strength for journey. When you look at Mr. Taylor's extensive rehabilitative background, and we stop there, because at some point the Louisiana prison system is set up to rehabilitate, and if at all possible, set up for re-entry of an offender who has done sufficient time, as well as an inmate who has completely completed certain rehabilitation programs. Mr. Taylor has done that, and he's expressed remorse, not just for his family, throughout his process. Because of those reasons, I, I, I would ask that the board would render a favorable decision for Mr. Taylor. And I understand that there will be some opposition from those who have prosecuted him 
Um, I think we stand our ground, ground on what we stand our ground on. But at the end of the day, as you said, Mr. And I'm sorry, I cannot even read these things. Um, and I taunt my 2020 vision around. I understand your job. And I believe what has happened in his 38 years is that he has rehabilitated himself. He does not present as a harm to society. He does have the wherewithal and the means through his family to re-enter re society without being a drain on society, which is all of the things that we look at. So I ask for a favorable vote on Mr. Taylor after serving 38 years, being of the age of 68 with a number of medical conditions in the facility. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. One more along. Yes, sir. Is there a reason why the Department of Corrections is making Mr. Taylor retake sex offender treatment? Is I see where he's currently enrolled. Yeah, uh, no, sir. Uh, I don't think we're making him. I think that he finished the uh, sex offender treatment years ago, back in 2007, I think is when he completed it. And I think it's it was his choice to uh, to retake it. Uh, I'm not seeing anywhere where we don't. We didn't recommend it. I see where you put it. It's two oh four. I'm sorry. I said it again. I see where he completed his sex offender treatment in 2004. Is that correct? Yes, sir. He. I think he. Uh, is the fourth, the final phase, the fourth phase, he completed in August of 2007. Yeah, uh, he started yeah. taking it, I think, in 2004. All right. And to clear the record, there is victim opposition. In this case, the daughter of the victim submitted an impact statement saying that she was adamantly opposed, and the son. I think his name is Chetwick, was contacted, but he's incarcerated on a postponed rape charge and is personally incarcerated and did not make a comment. Okay, Mr. Taylor. Um, first off, you know, I know you've had some medical problems, but uh, I don't think you're honest with me at all today. Um, there was the other charge that was brought about various, very similar situation. And it was the victim that backed off once you got your life sentence. Uh, your disciplinary history is bad. 1121 E's, that's all sexual. So that makes me worry. And, uh, my vote today is to deny Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Ms. Jackson? Hi, uh, Mr. Taylor. Um, let's just say I was disappointed by your responses today. I really don't think you were honest with the board about what happened. Um, but I do look at your age, your health issues, and the length of time you've been incarcerated. Uh, because of your health issues, I don't believe that you continue to pose a threat uh, to uh, the community. And so my vote today would be to recommend a commutation uh, to the governor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roche. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Taylor, when I sit in this chair, I look for rehabilitation. <clears throat> and I don't see that this morning. You have 11 <laughs> aggravated sex offenses between the years of 202 and 217. You completed sex offender treatment in 2007. You committed your last aggravated sex offense at the age of 62, six years ago. 
based upon the victim opposition and the lack of rehabilitation and the general disciplinary um, conduct, my vote is to deny your request. Mr. Taylor, uh, you have two votes to deny, one vote to grant. Uh, your vote would have to be unanimous today. Uh, your, uh, my vote would be, uh, uh, because of your age, because of your medical hif history, uh, I, would, I would also recommend a commutation. But you've got two votes to grant, two votes to deny. Your uh, request for a pardon has been denied. Good luck to you, sir. <laughs> I believe we're done. We're going to close out. Warden, thank you very much for your help. Uh, we'll uh, adjourn today. Uh, the time is 1042. Thank you.